Uh, yeah, this here is a hands-on channel. We're looking for Let's Go Brandon. Is there a Let's Go Brandon available? What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Hands-On Channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that I've spent a lot of time thinking about, and that's uh, communications once the SHTF happens. And so today we're going to talk about uh, radios that you might want to consider if you're a prepper. Uh, right now we're going through, you can hear me through the uh, center radio, that's the Baofeng uh, UV-5R, uh, but I've also got a set of MERS radios that we're going to take a look at, the Redivus uh, RT-27V, I believe, as in Victor. So uh, for right now I'm, gonna, I'm just out walking around in the yard so you guys won't be able to hear my voice except for on the radio. Okay, this is going to be an audio test of the MERS radio. Uh, it's the Redivus RT-27V, as in Victor. These are uh, MERS, M-U-R-S frequency, uh, so it's less travel or less traffic on it than a standard uh, family radio service. So, so far I'm pretty impressed with these. I think the sound quality is actually a little better on these radios than it is on the uh, Baofeng. So I'm going to come back in, check this audio, and see how that sounds, and then we're going to talk about these radios a little bit. So guys, we're going to take a look at prepper comms today. I think it's a big thing that a lot of people aren't really thinking about as far as uh, your basic preps. I mean, there's lots of different items that you might want to have around uh, for your prepping. Obviously, your defensive needs are going to come before this, but if you're kind of an advanced prepper and you've already got quite a bit of food stockpile and you've already got your water situation worked out, you've already got your defense situation worked out and how you're going to defend your preps and stuff like that and your family, then you're probably like me. You're, you're basically opening up a, a can of worms or a rabbit hole because this communications thing is it's a real big topic. It's, it's, uh, it took me quite a while to make a decision on what radios to purchase uh, because I read a lot of different stuff. You know that uh, for one thing that these uh, the radio there in the center and on the right, the Baofeng, uh, that they're illegal to use. And that's kind of true. It's technically illegal to transmit on these radios that's the problem that you're not allowed to transmit because you don't have a ham radio license now if you do have a ham radio license i guess more power to you you can do that uh it's obviously not the most powerful ham radio you're ever going to see i mean you can clearly see in my hand they're pretty small they're quite a bit smaller than i thought they were going to be uh, based on the ebay ad that i bought them off of so just to kind of give you some some scale there. There's my hand. They're not very big, uh, so they're not they're not going to take up a lot of space. But also, they're only five watts, so they're not going to transmit uh, for great distances like a like a proper ham radio base station would or something like that. So, obviously, this is a uh, entry level into ham uh, radio and other frequencies. Uh, one of the reasons I went ahead and bought these radios here on the right is because, you know, right now you're not legally allowed to use them because of the FCC rules. You're not allowed to transmit on them without a ham license. But even in the FCC rules, it states that if an emergency situation is underway or you're going through an emergency situation and you need to use these to save your life, then you're allowed to do that. And also I'm imagining a time in a WROL or without rule of law situation. So, I mean, at, at that point, no one's going to be coming and checking to see if you have a ham license or fining you or anything like that. So I would recommend having a couple of these Baofeng radios uh, just so that you'll have some form of communication if the grid completely collapses. I mean, it could be brought on by a financial collapse or something like that, but more than likely it could be like a Carrington type of a solar flare or something like that that could take out the power grid and the internet and all everything else connected to it. Or it could be something to do with the uh, World Economic Forum talking about this, uh, oh, I can never remember what the name of the thing is, but it's some you know cyber polygon or something like that, this, this drill that they were running on what would happen if the entire grid went down. So when I hear globalists like Klaus Schwab talking about stuff like that, it makes me think there may be a time in the future when the normal means of communication that we use every day, the cell phones, uh, hard lines, landlines, whatever you want to call them, all these other things. Uh, I was going to say payphone, but I haven't seen a payphone in like 10 years at least, so I'm not even sure they exist anymore. Uh, but anyways, uh, you know, when that stuff goes down, you're going to need some way to communicate. 
And uh, the reason I went ahead and bought the Baofangs is because I can do a lot of other stuff with them that I can't do with these radios on the left, the, re the Retivus or Retivus, however you say that. Um, so the, I'll talk about those right quick. The Retivus, the reason I bought those is so that my wife and I can use those right now legally on our new off-grid property that we're working on trying to develop into a homestead. Uh, there are times that I'm on the front 40 and she's on the back 40 and we need to be able to communicate with each other without having to holler our, our, our voices out and make ourselves go hoarse trying to holler at each other. So uh, that was the reason we went ahead and got these. I bought them on the MERS frequency because I've had radios, the little cheapo Cobras and stuff that you buy at Walmart or whatever, or Academy or whatever. I've had those before, and the problem is, is if you ever get around a group of other people like campers or anything like that, uh, those radio channels will all be full of chatter, and you won't know if you're responding to the person on the other end is, the, is your wife or whoever you're trying to talk to or if it's somebody else just getting in there and messing with you. So I don't really like the FRS uh, radio circuit. Uh, because it's just too full of chatter. You know, every kid, when they get new walkie-talkies for Christmas or whatever, that's the frequency that it's on, is that FRS. So I didn't want that. I ended up getting one with the, or a pair of them, with the MERS frequency. And it was a pretty good deal. It was like 40 bucks for both of them, I believe, uh, maybe 30 And the Baofangs were about $42 for the pair. And I thought that was a great deal. 20 bucks a radio, basically and I can make them all communicate with each other. Now, legally, I'm not allowed to transmit from the Baofeng radios over here to these radios, but I can use these for a listening device for this channel or whatever. So, uh, but just to stay all in the up and up with the FCC and all that, you're not allowed to transmit on those Baofengs at all unless you have a ham radio license. And even then, there's a, there's a gray area. I've heard a lot of guys talking about um, even if you had a ham radio license, that something about the registration of the FCC number on the Baofangs is not legitimate or something, I'm not exactly sure. So uh, that's about as far as I read into it because honestly, guys, I have no intention of getting a ham radio license. I have so much stuff on my plate right now that that's the last thing that I would want to do right now is try to get a ham radio license. So I've just been using them for monitoring and you can, you can go on and find there's a... Uh, Oh, uh, there's probably one for every state, but there's like a frequency database and you can go in there and find different frequencies of like the sheriff's department and of emergency services like fire and ambulance and stuff like that. And believe it or not, using it as a scanner like that, mine has been working great. Now, apparently a lot of the more modernized police departments have already gone to digital radio. These Baofangs won't pick up that digital radio. Uh, but apparently the police departments around my area are still on the old analog. And so I pick up quite a bit of chatter uh, just around, you know, like I heard a real interesting one that somebody near my, uh, relatively near my property here, uh, was breaking into a public uh, place where they had like a lot of road crew equipment over to the side of the road. Somebody maybe methed out or something like that or just looking for something easy to steal was over there scoping around and I got to kind of hear that interaction on the radio so it'll keep you up to date on what's going on and I would argue in a true SHTF you're going to suddenly hear all kinds of chatter on these radios because I'm not the only one that's uh you know buying these Baofangs in case SHTF happens so guys I highly recommend this uh, so far I'm really impressed all the buttons feel really good honestly I didn't really realize how big of a hole in my prepper game that I had until I got these radios and started playing with them and realizing that, okay, this is, a, is, this is a game changer because in a SHTF, I could send myself, my wife and a friend out and another friend or whatever, another person that's in our prepper community. Uh, I've tested out these, uh, Redivus radios more. We took those out to the property a couple of days ago. And I went to the back corner and my wife went to the front corner of the property and we still had great communications. It was getting a little bit staticky, but nothing that was, you know, impeding the radio signal or anything. You could still understand everything my wife was trying to say to me. I could understand it. Uh, there was a little bit of a learning curve that sometimes my wife starts talking before she pushes the button. So, we, you know, you have to kind of learn the radio a little bit and how to operate it and to remember to let off immediately when you're done speaking. So it's, you know, you just have to kind of 
learn how to do that. But if you've ever been a kid and played with walkie talkies, uh, this is reminiscent of that, except these are way better because they have lithium batteries. So, uh, so far, uh, now I haven't done this with the Baofangs yet, but so far these Redivus radios have lasted me all day long while my wife and I were out there uh, with them on. You know, now we weren't chattering on them a lot, so I'm sure if you if you talked on them a lot more that, you know, it would obviously run the battery down faster, but so far they've been able to handle everything we've thrown at them. The audio quality is really great on the Redivus. It's pretty good on the Baofeng, but I think the Redivus is a little bit clearer. So as far as like listening on the speaker end, you know how much we all rely on our cell phones now. Just imagine if that was gone and you couldn't communicate with the outside world. And I can get weather also with this. Let me flip through it a little bit while we're chatting here. Uh, so I've got it on frequency mode right now, and it's on the frequency that connects with these radios. And you'll have to look in the instructions on this radio, on these Redivises, they told me what the frequency was, so I was able to come and punch that in here uh, to my memory. And actually, I don't have this on memory. I just have it in frequency mode, but I punched it into frequency mode so that I could communicate with those radios uh, back and forth. Again, though, I can't transmit on this radio legally until SHTF happens, so I'm not going to do any of that. You can switch it over, and I don't, I don't think we'll get any, any action right now, but let me... Uh, So you get the idea, uh, you know, but yeah, you can, you can play around with that and get, get different frequencies. This was one of the frequencies that I was getting some chatter on the other day. So we'll see if anything happens while we're, while we're chatting here. But yeah, guys, I'm real happy about these things. They feel well built the, on the red of us too, the knobs, everything feels good. Uh, they do make noise when they turn on, and you can turn that off on the Baofeng. I don't think you can actually turn it off on this one, uh, but when you turn the radio on, it says... Open the radio. Open the radio. One. Or one, and what channel you're on. So this, this one here has five channels. Two, three, four, five, three, one. So, so you've got five different channels to play with here on this on this frequency, and I haven't programmed all of those into the Baofeng yet. What I what my thinking was is I'd have like one through five uh, communicate with this with these radios. That way it'd be quick for me to access them and have them programmed that way. And you actually don't have to have the programming cable, just so that you know. Uh, I thought I was going to have to buy the programming cable to be able to do anything, but no, you can actually punch in the frequencies on the face of the radio. And it will, it'll, there's a way to save it. Again, I'm not going to explain that because it's kind of a big deal to do it and go through all that on video. But yeah, guys, I'm real happy with these. I highly recommend you look into some prepper communications. I don't know what to tell you the best is or anything like that. Again, I'm just a beginner at all this stuff. Uh, but based on the videos that I've seen on the Baofangs and the Redivus uh, RT27V, um, and by the way, these are the UV5R, but they're, they're the upgraded ones. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but they're supposedly upgraded or whatever. So anyways, guys, real happy about this. Hopefully it'll inspire you to go out and get yourself some radios or some way of uh, communicating post SHTF. We all know it's coming. Hang in there, guys. Keep on prepping. I stand for liberty. I hope you do too.